it's one of them ones that I think on paper you look at Ace and most people will lean towards Na'Vi. But as they spoke about on the desk, Na'Vi have been a little bit inconsistent at points. Fantastic when they reach their highs, arguably one of the highest in the competition. But the problem is we don't see that version of Na'Vi every single week. No, absolutely not. It's something that I was saying uh, a little earlier on today as well. Is you know if if the best Na'Vi turn up today, then they'll win this. That's what I would expect. Even on a map like Bank, where we think Virtus Pro are going to come out and be strong, you know, I, I would still expect Na'Vi to come out and beat not only Virtus Pro but potentially any team in the world. But we just don't know that that's what we're going to get. Keep a close eye if you're at home if it's your first time watching Na'Vi. Have a look at Doki. Have a look at Blur. Two players that particularly dictate the pace and success of this Na'Vi side very often. If they come out with good days, then Na'Vi quite often comes out with a W. Now then, looking at the operator bands, Hibana, Thatcher, Mira, Valkyrie. So boomer, by the way. Stock standard. Comes out with a W. The W? Top of the dub, mate. I know my place does. <laughs> And it's not with the kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of the story for both of us, but I still try. Yeah. You, well, you, we know that you're the meme that turns out, how do you do, how do fellow, you do kids? fellow kids? That is me in a That's nutshell, you mate. That is and through. But yeah. I know my place, Des. I know my place. I got shouted down. What did I say? I said shooketh last week and... <laughs> Jess, Jess has just done the same face <laughs> she, <laughs> she did, did last week. Then. You see, I know my place. Oh, you're the endearing, like, dad, I guess. I, I just, I've just stopped trying now. <laughs> so... <laughs> Both these teams are going to be trying. They're going to be trying on bank to get themselves a dub, Des. They want to come away with the three points. They want the maximum. They want it inside of 12. Virtus Pro have had a shaky stage. We saw them, of course, qualify for, but unfortunately unable to attend the Six Invitational this year. And it just feels like it's been a little bit of a slippery slope ever since, Des. We've just never really had them reaching those same heights of stage. It's always been sort of downhill from there. Only slowly. I'm not saying they've, you know, fallen off the face of the earth, but they're just not showing us their best performances. I'm glad that Jess gave the shout out to WTG beforehand. We saw him play fantastically well last play day. He is intrinsic to this side at the minute. And bearing in mind, he was subbed out as well for Andriti for a couple of games and has come back in pretty lights out for them. I refer back to that G2 game on Cafe. The one round being one I put a lot of the credit onto WTG, his charge through piano. The only one really it felt like being willing to take a risk and make something happen in that game really did shine. But we have kind of swerved away from talking about a certain operator in this game. It is the Amaru of Rask finding Blur, starting things out quite early into the round as well. So although Amaru not being used in the way that you might expect, you know, blazing in through a window, of course, from the downstairs site, still very quick entry into the building and finding an opening kill. That is because I think they were expecting Na'Vi to start upstairs inside a CEO lockers. They've got a really cool hold up there where they'll stick secretly behind a uh, deployable shield holding off onto the white facing up towards square. And maybe they thought that would be the first point of employment, but apparently not. Now that they know this armor exists on the side of Na'Vi, I can't imagine you'll see it too many more times. It is a good start for Virtus Pro. There's no two ways about that. You can't uh, talk down getting an opening kill, especially onto a player like Blur. But given the site, I would still expect Na'Vi to be capable here. Don't think that this one, this race is run just because of that opening kill down on the basement. They should be able to lock it down with four players. Now, we've had a almost unbelievable lull here in the middle of the round as VP have come in with the Amaru. They've really cleared out that opening kill and then slowed down. It's all about the top two floors at the minute. WTG just looking to open angles. They're still not confident, I don't think, that the top two floors are clear where Navi, they are locked down in the basement, turtle style at the minute. This is it, right? This is the identification on their side. They found the one man on the first floor and they're worried that maybe you'll see more holding around upstairs. Not to be the case though, and 45 seconds later, they are starting to move themselves forward. It has been about a minute and a half since they found Blur on that opening kill, mind you. So although a slow start, they are now getting themselves set up. With 70 seconds on the clock and the hatches into sight themselves being opened up. I would be feeling too nervous if I was Virtus Pro right now. It's about thinking about this execute, where these last four members are. And once you've got that intel on lockdown, 
that's when you start thinking about what push you're going to make. And look at that. Three players were on drones for a second there. WTG, Karzeka and Pasha all collecting that info so this execute can come off without a hitch. It's an interesting conversation to have around the Thatcher race when the majority of your hard breaching is going to come down to hatches. I'll come back to that one because I'm just conscious that things are going to start kicking off here no, in here. the round. OK, looking to challenge onto elevators. The man could drop the rear hatch. WTG finds Nath. And we found ourselves now in a five versus three in favour of Virtus Pro. And the slow and steady approach is certainly working for them, Des. They are just absolutely picking Navi apart one at a time here. And they're just singling people out for the next attack. And the next one to come is going to be Doki flashed out just inside of the vault there. We go a flawless wow. round. Beautiful from Virtus Pro at the end. Just sectioning Navi out and picking them off one player at a time, leaving them in unwinnable situations, each man to the last. And I like what I see from Virtus Pro there. And as Jess said, coming into this, Navi need to make sure they get as many defensive rounds as they can. And I tell you what, if it goes on like that, they're not going to be taking too many more, if any. If any, yeah. And I've got to give a real big shout out to Virtus Pro. We called around that 70 second mark. They were three or four people on drones. They were collecting information on the downstairs. They knew what was going on and then chose to isolate these individual players. And Doki, poor lad, was stuck in no man's land. The man had dropped down inside of um, Elevator. They had one ready to drop on the magic hatch up towards the north as well from Lobby. He was stuck, and all they had to do was flash him, charge their way through. The rest of them couldn't really come in for the full assist, and even though Doki, I think, sat there not flashed towards the end when the push came through, he's being pushed from two directions. He's one of the last man left standing, not a single shred of resistance coming out of the Na'Vi side. And maybe it takes a bit of time to warm into it. Maybe you say, right, a couple of rounds and we'll see how things shape up. But we are going to see that Amaru returning. Sick picked in by Rask and we're on the side that they intended to come to back in the first round. Absolutely right. I think, you know, the point there is, Des, that Virtus Pro were definitely stacked up for a top floor take last time around. And the reason I say that touches on the same point that I wanted to make about the hard breach, the, the discussion I was going to have at the back end of round one. And that is, if you want to get hatches, Hibana's banned out. If they thought they were going to bottom floor on an attack, I would expect them to bring Maverick along because with Ace and with Thermite on board, you can still only realistically get a maximum of three hatches. But by doing that, you leave yourself seriously short for any potential breaching needs down on site because to get three hatches with those two hard breaches it would take two exothermics and two of the three Selmas. That will get you your three hatches. So then you've got one Selma left if you want to breach, say, the server wall to get in and get a diffuser down. That leaves you only a crouch hole. It's much better if you can get a thermite on that wall to give you room to move back and forward because it's one of those plant spots that you have to bait utility out, so you need that freedom of movement. Of so that's why I say... Of course, of course I would. would. But that's why I would say Virtus Pro just weren't stacked up for that bottom floor. When they come out later, here probably maybe the next round we'll see if Navi win this defence say and they go into bottom floor and they know they are I'd expect the Maverick instead when we saw BDS play on this map I always remember talking about Shaiko's push coming in he had support from uh, Bride playing on the windows like Karjaka is doing here he'd push into ATMs he would nade up towards Banana and catch the man that was just sat inside of the front desk area Doki's playing there on the Jaeger but he's got an ADS up there with him so it's not going to be a freebie if they come pushing in from lobby and shook a couple of nades up there it's not going to be that simple starting out the round is a little bike back coming in it's secretly onto Karzeka at about that 137 mark or so Doki still holding around Banana and willing to challenge if the push comes in through lobby a bike back with a nice one tap from secretly Milon Look at that. on that upside down rappel just trying to that is, get a peek is, Doki sees the man he wants the challenge you can just see he's almost crawling out of his skin Des to get to him he knows there's a player there and this is just one of the key aspects Poor of Doki. Doki's game is that he can't leave it alone Doki. now then this is interesting Rask he's going straight up the hatch into the elevator that makes Doki's position even more precarious he's now got men on three sides of him but if anybody's capable of fighting his way out we know that it's him Pasha manages to find Blur levels it up 4 to 4 52 seconds left to go I'm not sure if Virtus Pro have given up on dealing with Doki they have not Pasha steps in and manages to find him through one of those banana windows and once again there's, it's all starting to fall apart for Na'Vi they're not having the run of things on bank like they did against G2. Might have started out with the MP5K kill coming out of secretly, make it a second, but Virtus Pro with their lobby push, incredibly oppressive. Doki kind of left out to dry, it felt like at points, but once the kills started falling, they simply did not stop like a stack of dominoes. Two rounds in the row for Virtus Pro. And Na'Vi need to find some answers, Tim, because they haven't even looked competitive in these last two rounds. Two kills in total, both of them on secretly.
Heading back downstairs, it looks like then, to CCTV and lockers. We don't have the Maverick coming along. They are sticking with the Ace and Thermite combo, but it's just something to watch out for if we have that sort of unsuccessful attack, whether it does come down to any difficulty getting into sight. The thing is, last time they didn't play for that server wall. So if that's the tactic, if it's just about getting those three hatches and then dropping in and picking people apart, they'll be just fine. But Navi are going to be stacked up and prepared for it this time, I would expect. I wouldn't have thought we would see Blur now. I was also interested, Des, all the hatches got opened without too much of a problem. So I, I wasn't really sure where the electrocores had been placed, if they'd been put on any of the hatches, what, you know, if they'd been used on maybe the server wall, if Blur had maybe been taken out before getting back downstairs to place them, whether, you know, he was just looking for an early pick after getting the hatches. I'm not 100% sure. I want to keep a close eye on the Kaid this time, just to see exactly what goes on with those electrocores, where they've been placed, can they deny some of these hatches, because they don't really have anybody to clear those electrocores off. None of the hatches have got soft floor around them so you can't clear them out that way so they're going to be difficult to get rid of it's kind of mad thinking about it how there's what five reinforcements being committed towards hatches by the defenders well the Elevator. thing is you only need a couple down on site that, that, that's it right you don't need to reinforce much walls. on the downstairs so it's not really a big deal for you here it's going to be the electric core going down inside of the elevator one that was where we saw ras drop in from last time yep. and really corner doki in place and he couldn't do a whole lot from that position to be honest with you so that's been the theme across two rounds though is doki has been kind of left isolated so i'm not saying it's strictly on his team there and saying no one's helping him it's a decision they've made but Virtus Pro have identified it in both rounds and really made him pay for being so far outfield from the rest of his team. OK, so this time we've got electric holes, we've got one on that elevator hatch, as you said, and we've got one now positioned on one of the open area hatches, so they'll still be able to open the hatch that looks directly into sight, but that just might dictate Virtus Pro's play a little bit here. They might not be able to get everything open that they want, as you say. Definitely going to have to be a different game plan to the one that we saw last time around where they were able to use those elevators. We hear the Amaru of Rask just zipping up to the top floor there, nice and quick, getting himself inside of the map, almost at the halfway mark, and Navi not lost anybody yet. They're happy to play this one from on site this time around, no roaming. We didn't really catch it in the first round, but I think you've just seen it there, a couple of jammers being set up on the first floor. It does mean Virtus Pro kind of have to pause, clear those out, find out where there could be roamers hanging in a corner of a room that they can't quite get a drone into. So although maybe in the first round they look slow, and sure, it did take them a good minute and a half after they killed Blur to get themselves set up for the execute. Here, it's just being cautious and being patient. They know they've got enough time when it comes around to an execute. The one thing that might get in their way this round, as you alluded to, is the Kaid on a couple of those hatches. Things that they took for granted in the previous round are now being denied away. And it's secretly holding close with the shotgun on Blue, just daring someone to come stepping in. Sure enough, drone work coming out to find out if there is indeed someone lurking around. But the fear, as always, is that there is a jammer present. So the first hatch to go is the server hatch, which would usually potentially force secretly away from these stairs, because basically he's got no exit route now. He's going to have to play his entire life here, and that's what he's going to do. He's going to stick, because the likelihood is that he's going to find that angle watched. Milan is in position to cut him off so he can't get back to side. It's going to take something special for secretly to get back. He's about to be challenged, actually, as Pasha does make the drop there secretly. Back up the stairs, goes out with the shotgun. Does he get the kill? No, he's back downstairs again. Just moving around, he does find the and this is the problem. If somebody commits so heavily to stairs, Milan will get the trade, and that levels us out at 4-4, four to four, but only 19 seconds left, there's, there's a ton of work to be done. Virtus Pro do not have the same sort of control that they did last time. An absolute freebie for Vert Blur as he finds the man on the main stair. Two versus two, though, as once again, Milan just brute forces oh, his no. way in, starts getting the diffuser down. This Echo Drone is going to have to be quick. The time runs out, and there it is. The power of the Yorkai. We discussed this after the opening of the, the pre-show days where they were talking about Echo's win rate and it being really low and I said, yep, yeah, you know, that's understandable the Yorka drones, they don't go invisible anymore the teams are good at clearing them out and the one sort of addendum that we put to that was, however when they survive into the final seconds, they are absolute showstoppers, and that is what it was. I mean, normally for the Russian teams as well, look at both Empire and Virtus Pro when defending the basement of Kitchen. They really make good use of the Yokai's, and in that case, it's not quite on the same map, but it has been put to excellent use, saving the round for Na'Vi and getting them there first on the board. 
one that you look at and say, Verdes Pro, 15 seconds to push in realistically. You know, the five versus five, well, it wasn't the five versus five, it was the four versus four because of secretly dying on blue after finding himself a kill. Yet they still managed to push in and bring it down to the two versus two. I think Blur whiffed out on the C4 a little bit. Milan collected the 3K. We all know how it can go down when, you leave, when you're leaving the execute until the dying few seconds. No room for errors, including being blasted by a yokai. The Amaru that I thought we might see drop away after that first or second round is really stuck, by the way. Rask, a lot of fight, using it not just for windows, but also for getting up and down hatches, mainly, of course, to go up. Not so much use when on the basement side of things, but it is enabling them once they've got the initial control on the top floor for him to join them nice and quick and start going for the clear to remove the mute jammers, any players that might be lurking around as well. So I do like what we're seeing there. I mean, on the side of Earth's Pro, they've got a lot of utility there. So you've got Frags on Sledge and Finker. You've got your Hard Breach. You've got your Soft Breach on Kajeka and Sledge. You've got everything you need there. You know, Rask, he's got his flashes so he can clear out a few ADSs. Absolutely great. But beyond that, as long as he's happy, it doesn't really matter too much. If he's got a gun that he's, he's keen to use, he can, as you say, use that Amaru gadget for a bit of unexpected mobility around the map. It's, you know, really in that slot, that is the slot where you could sort of bring anybody along to change the shape of the attack. And he's been doing well so far, so no doubt keen to stick with it. WTU is waiting to get that drone inside, I think, but it's not going to happen just yet. As always, they are wanting to stop up on the top floor, and that one not droning out the magnets means one will get eaten up. Will they find a second as well? Going to cut this one all the way through, and it will connect onto the... No, it wouldn't. Just fell short by the looks of it. There was another one waiting behind it anyway. Cicator had tried to sing in a little bit deeper. So the castle barricade remains standing, and they know that this needs to go. Provides quite a lot of cover to those that were playing inside a long desk, for example. And in comes the push in. How? It's Rask who's amarooed up and found himself one today. Did he get the second? No, he can't. Spraying through the wall. Blur going low, but not enough to find himself going down. And has to impact off that castle barricade to try and get away. But Karjeka has got the cut. Great punish onto the top floor by Virtus Pro. And still 100 seconds to look at this execute. The problem for Navi here is that Virtus Pro are just getting so much control over this top and mid floor. As soon as they try to move anywhere, they're moving into a line of sight for Virtus Pro. And it is becoming really, really tough for them. The Navi defenders absolutely sweating every angle that is produced. Now, Zeke manages to find one onto Milan. Having a good day today in terms of the frag department. Can there be a second? Yes, and that is important. Saves, I often talk, Des, about these important mid-round kills that Saves gets that can really turn around on its head, and that could be one because he's just stopped a lot of the vertical destruction. Kozeka on the ace can get in there with the soft breach gadget, the secondary, and still start to open it up. But it's going to burn time for him to get up there if they want those vertical angles, whereas the push is now likely to start coming in a bit more direct towards site. It's funny how we spoke about Navi being the ones who often find the entry and then can't always push forward. The mid-round is where they lack, but here they fought it back in the mid-round by contesting those vertical angles. Smoke one comes through, more of a bait than anything else to see who moves and what they do. Drone going to spot out Doku, still sticking his ground, waiting for the drop to come in from above. We know about Karjeka on that long angle as well. Shouldn't find himself pressured out just yet and has got saves for support off towards that side. So entirely the Scotland's focus can be up towards the north, but the man of the window gets sprayed through the soft wall by Rask. That's one You'll be looking back and ruin later on, my friend. In comes the plan now, secretly waiting for the man to vault in. Sees him, but misses the shots, misses them all. Raskus to the room, HP. It's a three versus one. Secretly, he's got to do it all. Finds one. He's been getting so many kills today, but can he make the final two work for them? Knows that one's crouched down. There's also one playing upstairs above, but she'll have to deal with if this round is going to be won. Expecting to come down the main stairs. No one yet appearing, but should know that one is lurking here in the cubicle. Sees the head. What a flick from Secretly. And he's got about 15 seconds to push the last man. But Karjeka has got to panic. He can take his time here. He can wait until he hears that diffuse sound coming through. He's going to have to do something to bait it out. Secretly starting to stick the spray comes through. He's pulled himself away. And Karjeka playing this one expertly. Nothing secretly is going to be able to do. That should be another round going the way of Virtus Pro and Karjeka winning out the 1v1. Great play once again from Virtus Pro. Doki just overextending ever so slightly there, Des. And it really does show one of the things that I love about Siege so much. You've got to be hyper aware of every panel, every wall, every angle, everything surrounding you. And just stepping in front of that soft wall gave the perfect opportunity to Rask to be able to gun him through the wall. And Doki was the man holding the hatch. So then that allowed Pasha in on the thermite to get that plant down. And it was a valiant attempt at the end to 
bring it back there from secretly once again, having a great day for his team, but unable so far, Navi, to really convert that into many rounds on the scoreboard. It's 3-1 for Virtus Pro now. And well, a lot of predictions are looking shot at this point. <laughs> I'll say we've had this last week though, didn't we? We got really excited about the 5-1 coming in for G2 on Cafe. Like, oh, they can win this now, 5-1 up and then it ends up going completely against them with every single round going the way of Virtus Pro from that point onwards. So I'll always say, let's wait and see how the first couple of rounds of the second half play out, but I do agree with you. Virtus Pro are just hitting Na'Vi They're just a lot better. hard right now. And I've got to give it all down to Rask for the starting part as well. Yeah. The early round, the pressure of him springing down a hatch, for example, into Elevator back on their first round attack. Last round, bursting upstairs, killing one man in CEO, forcing the other to go and vault over the lobby stairs and having him killed by Karl Shekka. It's just great team play. They've got these angles set up. They're punishing those members of Na'Vi who are doing things that are a little bit crazy, a little bit hectic. This is the setup, by the way, that I was on about earlier on that I really, really liked. Secretly set upon the shield, watching off towards Square. You'll normally get saves inside of Janitor. And what he will do is swing out and challenge Square whenever Secretly is looking towards Stock. This was one of their more solid defenses against G2. If Virtus Pro break this open, I'm kind of frazzled for Na'Vi and worried for them at that point around how they might be able to find round number six as well. As you say, Rask has been a real catalyst, Des. Mm. You know, he's been the one that's really got them going. I Maybe start calling him Rascalist. He's been the Rascalist. Sp you could have just stopped at Rascal. No, I'm Catalyst. That's He's been the spark. Right, now, okay, now you can find There you go. Words. No, you're with no. me now. I can see that you like it. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> now then, Na'Vi, they're not finding much to like inside. I'll tell you what, some people who work at the Oxford Dictionary are coming for you later, mate. I'm telling you, you're getting hauled away in a van. Now you've just got to force a few words together sometimes. You never know what, <laughs> Look at these names. Never know what might come out of it. There you go, a lot of utility oh, getting to cleared out. Things. But the electrical will remain in place. And given that this is a top floor defence, that's an important piece of utility because what it's going to do is prevent the angle getting opened up onto Cantor secretly. Just going to dip away from that nade and it does clear the electrical, which is now allowing... <laughs> There we go, Kajeka straight up onto Too the late. rappel. There you go, perfectly timed, beautifully played, and that is Selma Charger's burnt. There's two left to go, but what do they now have to clear out the electrical? The nades have been thrown in there. They've been used up, so that is going to keep the long angle close for Na'Vi, and that could be really big because it allows secretly not only to stay in elevator, but to play more aggressively. He can come out of elevator slightly. He can peek onto stairs. He can peek down towards stock. Just gives him a lot more flexibility. You really hear they've burnt through all their utility, so Na'Vi should be in a position where they're thinking, right, we can do this now. We've still got the wall reinforced. They've gone through their flashes. They've gone through their nades. They've burnt through the lot. All they've got remaining is those three oh, breaching rounds, which down. aren't really all that useful on this site, and two smokes. So a smoke plan could be on the agenda for them, but Milan finds Nath. And this is the thing, even when all the chips are down, when things are looking grim, you can still find kills, and they've found two of them so far, Ace. The five versus three and 45 seconds to play. That is more than enough for VP to make some magic happen. Milan and Rask once again, the sparks in the powder keg that just threaten to start an explosion all over Na'Vi as the defenders now try to hold on three versus five. So much work for them to be done here. And the fact is that they are just losing gunfights. It's not necessarily their fault. Virtus Pro are just on a bit of another level here on the attack than we have seen so far. Uh, there you go, they rein in one after another. It's almost like they were just waiting for the moment, Des. It was like three Three, two, one, push. And they just went in and absolutely decimated Na'Vi. They mopped them up like a spilt drink. It, it's just too easy. Like, again, you look at the round and say, right, they've burnt everything. All their utility is gone trying to clear a wall. They failed. Cool. That is the best chance Na'Vi then have at winning that round with all their utility on side, the C4s, the smoke canisters, everything. And they still get flawless rounded. It's... It's rough. And this is the thing I always say coming into a day of siege. Like, there's probably a 50% lean for any given team. Like, 50% below, they're playing at half as well as they normally would. They're not hitting their shots, whatever it might be. Above 50%, they are playing well above what is expected of them. And today, Na'Vi are just not playing at that level. Look at their kills. They've got nine kills across five rounds so far, Ace. That is less than two kills a round. And the thing is, coming into this, and I'm not just putting it on them, I understand that a lot of the time we look at things like kills and we say, you know, this player or that player, and it's down to the whole team. It's, you know, it's a team game. There are five players in there. Some are there to get kills. Some are there to do other things. But coming into it, I said, let's keep an eye on Dorky. 
If they have a bad day, Na'Vi tend to struggle to get going. And they've got one kill between them inside five rounds. And that's just not like them. That's not me calling them out. That's just a fact that it's not like them. But at this point, I would probably be expecting 10 to 10 to 12 kills maybe at least from Dorky and Blur between them yeah. in these rounds and we just haven't seen it and that's what's missing you know whereas Virtus Pro 15 between Milan and Rask they're getting the job done and they are just absolutely clinical they're coming in here Des the one thing is I don't feel like there's much brute force from Virtus Pro it's surgical they're coming in here with a scalpel it's and just patient. taking pieces off Na'Vi. I mean, we spoke earlier on about, you know, the clear was taking quite a while, and the next time around we spotted all the mute jammers that were scattered across the ground floor, which was the main thing slowing Virtus Pro down. But they didn't panic, they got on the top floor, they opened the verticals, they cleared them out and went on forwards from there. The one thing in this round to be aware of, and of course the change that's coming in, is once again, these are electrified. And if you look back to round three, where Na'Vi did find their solitary win to date, a lot of that came down to the final 15 second push, you know, Virtus Pro couldn't get what they were looking for. I want to see how they adapt in this round. The main thing, of course, being that they've dropped the Amararu for the first time and instead have the Maverick on side. So if there is a critical hatch they want to get open, you can guarantee it's getting opened. Virtus Pro certainly starting to find form at the right time here. Just over the halfway mark through the stage three of EUL, they really start to find the performances. First with a long comeback against G2 and now now with, honestly, so far, a masterclass on attacking bank against Na'Vi. And you just feel like Na'Vi are going to be beaten up so badly in this first half that getting anything in the second may be a big ask. But we will see how those first couple of defensive rounds goes for Virtus Pro very, very soon. But as we stand, we've got the Maverick, as I suggested, Des, coming in to get those hatches open. It just negates oh, the Kaid, but you can't negate the Nitro as Blur finds Finds his man on a long toss up through the hatch and shuts him down. That was just a bit easy, that one, I think, for him too. A good prediction on the direction that he would run in because he could have run left and said you just didn't know. But Blur guessed correctly. Nate coming down into red now removes out the shield. We spoke a lot about like teams playing Warden down here, for example, against Kavana, I want to say it was, to stop them clearing them out so easily. And they still found a way to break it open in the end. But with that shield being removed, no one can comfortably play inside of red. So already Virtus Pro applying some pressure. We've seen this one before, Ace. The first drop comes through, but secretly finds the second in the round. Surely. Na'Vi can win a round. Na'Vi doing a better job of winning their gunfights as well, secretly getting himself his seventh kill so far on the day, going very well. And Kajeka being held at bay here in garage on the long angle, nearly Nath. finds his man, but Nath, he just manages to keep tussling with the ace here on the echo. It's a long battle, but whilst it's raged, John Des, the rest of Virtus Pro have been cut down. 12 seconds left to go. It's all up to Kajeka, and the support comes in for Nath a little too late to keep him alive but it's not going to matter as the kills here will be meaningless because Jekyll gets himself another couple <laughs> but still Na'Vi win the round as that sixth man the clock ticks its way down and puts the second on the board for Na'Vi they did it they won some gunfights ace they got what they were looking for in that entire half and that was some kind of gun power dominance coming through in a round it only gives them two on the defensive side, you'd probably be saying, oh, this isn't necessarily the best for us. We thought we'd play better. But for me, it's less about the fact they have the two rounds and it was the manner in which those rounds were lost, I think, to Virtus Pro. Again, as dominant as they were, as we mentioned, it was quite traumatizing, I think, for Na'Vi to be able to get through that half. They've come out of it battered and bruised, but they are still in it with a chance of being able to fight their way back in. Here, you're going to see Rask out on the roam playing on the that vigil. You've got the Mozzie instead of the Mute instead for their denial. Plus the Castle coming along. And I say this every time I see Castle Ace. I really enjoy seeing Castle set up some where these things are going to go because with that being impacted open already leading in towards Tellers that just screams to me you're going to see some real fancy stuff going on on the ground floor. Well, this is it. You've got the elevator hatch actually being opened up as an option there. We saw how devastating that could be on Virtus Pro's original attack but the castle barricade on the double door suggests obviously that Virtus Pro are going to be trying to hold on to that as best they can out on the roam. So there's going to be much more of a roam presence. And it's interesting because it's something I was going to pick up on, Des. When we look back at Na'Vi's win against G2, if you remember, they just caused an absolute nightmare for G2 on the mid and top floors. It's just not something that we've seen them accomplish here against Virtus Pro. So now, Virtus Pro, what do they do? Come in on the defence, and straight away, we've got three 
men on the upper floors. So they are forcing Na'Vi to potentially play for that top floor clearance down, and they're going to hope to take them out as they do. But secretly, he's got himself straight down the dirt tunnel there, and he's potentially in a position to put some pressure on site very quickly if Na'Vi recognise that WTG, he's all alone. I was going to say easy can go up a floor, but he's already done it. I wanted to see which hatches were open here as well. So they've got the one inside of the office that leads down. They've got the one inside of service that also leans down. So a good little setup coming in on the top floor as well with two playing up there. The thing is, if Saves can crouch walk his way forward here, he can cause some real damage and potentially cut off those drops coming back in like he's looking to do now. If they don't know he's here and he just bre like pushes his way into sight and kills one, suddenly it'll be panic stations for the side of Virtus Pro. They've got that early warning with the door being reinforced. There's still one playing inside of red. So there are options to keep him at bay. And sure enough, is he going to back away or carry on? In he goes, I think, potentially. The thing is, whilst they've still got particularly Pasha on the castle upstairs, they can't really push towards site. Miller manages to find Nath. He's got the hatch open that's allowing a full angle into the default plant spot. So there's nowhere to put the diffuser down, potentially, just because they're going to get hit from above. Secretly gets an important kill and takes that man down. But all the while, Na'Vi are just bleeding men here, secretly. Now on super low health, Save finds Rask, leaves us three versus versus two, but you've still got to say that the power sits with Virtus Pro right now, and I love this defense from them. Usually, on the bottom floor of Bank Des, we just see all the utility, all the manpower focused towards that basement level. Spread into that mid floor, holding angles through hatches, bringing some verticality to it. I'm loving it. Really enjoying what I'm seeing as well. The fact they've always got, it feels like at least two people challenging onto a gunfight secretly. <laughs> Put himself low there and I was like, hey, careful now. He knows, of course, how much damage you take by falling out, but he is now literally one shot. So he's really going to be the one doing a lot of the work for them here. And he drops and you can see what the game plan is going to be and rightly so because all the members of VP were set up out towards the west side except for WTG who's holding nice and close. Still two smoke canisters to his name. Secretly takes even a single breath and I'm pretty sure he's going down there so they need to get rid of him first before they can make this push happen. Melon just holding the angle out towards a potential spot. Oh, secretly does find Kozjeka on the one tap, putting his limited health to maximum use. He's going to use that blowtorch on the soft wall. He doesn't want to have to try vaulting in here, especially on low health. As I said previously, he needs that free movement, Des, in case there is utility to come out, because one tick of that toxic babe canister would be sufficient to put him down. Now then, he's going to use a bullet hole. A bit more of a punch hole to see if he can find the man. He does get shots through into red, but with no choice, he's going to have to go in here for the plant. Now, there's no toxic babe canisters left. Oh, it Milan. doesn't matter. Milon just angle. steps out, gets a kill, and that's going to close it down. And that was a great defence from Virtus Pro. I enjoyed it. It was different. It was entertaining. And Na'Vi just lost too many men in the early round. You feel like if one or two of those gunfights go a different way, maybe Na'Vi could have built something there. But it just felt a little bit too late at the point that they recognise that, hang on a minute, we've got a big problem on the mid floor here. I don't think they seem to phase either by the fact they lost a couple of members trying to play aggressively into secretly. They were in that four versus two, let's not forget, before saves brought one back. And we see how the round descended out was from there. But as you said, very patient, which is what I enjoyed seeing the most. It wasn't chaotic and panicked as we've seen from Virtus Pro on some of their worst days. Today, they are really on fire. And you can see why I think they were talking about on the desk at the start. The Russian team's well known for playing bank. Virtus Pro just showing, yeah, they are to be feared on bank and maybe teams won't be so keen to bring them here in future. Well, it just goes to show, you know, they've come out and they've done something different. They've done something that we've not seen from the other teams. And just like when we saw Na'Vi holding bar and stage on Clubhouse and other teams have come away and emulated that, Des, I wouldn't be surprised to see teams coming away and emulating at least parts of that defence from Virtus Pro there when they're trying to hold on to the bottom floor of bank because it really was, it was a great extension and it forced Na'Vi to waste a lot of time and manpower trying to play into it and it was well held by Virtus Pro they certainly deserve the plaudits on that one we're going to be moving into round 8 now after the tactical timeout from Na'Vi we'll see if that can have any impact on the momentum try and swing things here but even one more round on the defence for Virtus Pro Des is going to leave them in a guaranteed overtime position as a minimum it ain't going to be pretty is the only real way I can describe that again the 6 pick away from the Echo onto the Vigil for Rask the man has been a bit of a nightmare in this game. And of course, the one player that it feels we always get to shout out whenever VP play well, Milan. It's a player that in this game, I think, has been really strong on the entry as well. Normally a player that I say, look, in the mid-round, he's the guy you want. 
He's not your Rask, he's not your Pasher, he's not normally the go-to entry guy, but if you want someone who's going to pick up two or three kills in the mid-round and make things happen, it used to be Milan playing on the Zofia. And obviously in this game, with her being out of meta, he's had to change to playing things like the Finca, but still doing so still absolutely doing job. wonderfully. Here, of course, on the Mozzie on the defensive side. And as you say, at five and two, one more round and they at least guarantee overtime. And that would require Na'Vi getting four rounds back to back. Just feels impossible when you say those words out loud. It feels impossible here and now because Virtus Pro, they're not just in the driving seat. They're absolutely commanding this game so far. No matter what happens, they always have a response. They always have an answer and they always seem to be ahead in terms of the man count within each round as well. You know Always what's scary? On top. Just looking at the points a second ago, Navi are sat in fifth on seven points, Virtus Pro are seventh on six. This the, is it, Virtus Pro can well get themselves back in the to thing is, the major we're, the contention. Thing is, we're saying yeah. this about everyone, because Empire on seven, Kavana on why eight, I love EUL. Vitality are on nine, Rogue are 11. Like, BDS are probably the only team that feel comfortable right now on 14 points, because they've got four wins. Everyone else, it's <laughs> second to fourth is a war. It's just a like maelstrom. Six or seven teams, it's great. It's just a maelstrom with about six teams whipping round inside of it, and we'll see who comes out at the end and gets Who's through to the Who's going spat out to the November Major, we're not quite sure yet. Stay Absolute tuned. madness, and that is exactly why we love this league so much. Now then, Doki on the windows, Three and e. I tell you what, Doki is a sometimes window a window player. <laughs> he manages to get himself a down onto Kajeka at least. I think he knows that the man is down. He saw him drop and did try to use utility to finish him off, tried to do anything he could. Kajeka, he's going to leave a, quite a messy trail of blood along the way to the elevators as he tries to get himself to drop to safety so that he can be collected. Now Doke does get in and he's starting to find his aggression now that he's on the attack. Could this be the turning point, Des Pasha? Finds saves, four versus three at the halfway mark and a lot more early round aggression from Navi this time. It's successfully so. Surely they know about the man on the downstairs as well. Doki's going hunting and my God, does he find him. Pasha taken out and Doki finally it feels for the first time in the game springing into action two kills in the early round and now we find themselves in a four versus two with 75 seconds still remaining on the clock ace I'm looking at that and thinking realistically this reminds me of what we saw back in round one from Virtus Pro 70 seconds on the clock the numbers advantage and you thought can they still do this and my god did they do it so surely you've got some conviction as Navi here to get this one over the finish line as well WTG just inside a sight on the outer there. If there's ever was a gun built for a late clutch situation, it is that one. He's just looking to hold Mouse one at some point. He's going to need to hold it for a long time here as he finds himself in a one versus four shut down by Secretly. How many times can I say that today? <laughs> Secretly, kill after kill after kill. And this is what Na'Vi need, Des. We've been saying it for the longest time. We come into so many games saying we need to watch Dorky and Blur. We need them to be getting the kills. What we really need and what I've said before is when that isn't happening when those players are on a quiet day you need players in your back line who can step up and get those kills who can replace them and we're certainly seeing that from Secretly today. It's normally Saves that you look to in those kind of games as well. Like Saves is a player who, he doesn't play the super aggressive entry role. That's normally on Doki, but Saves is the kind of guy who, I guess like Milan, you'll see being the lurker on the team, the one who will have an impact in the mid to late round and can potentially win the whole team uh, around. Unless there are somewhere he's just designated being flank watch, in which case he's probably not getting all that involved. He'll get one critical kill, but that will be about it. So when you're looking outside of Doki and Blur, you look towards saves. When you go past saves, you'd probably be asking questions of, you know, secretly not regarded as a top gunner. Nath also not really up there, one of the support players too. But on this play day, this one that matters to them, 13 and 6 on secret. Yes, again, as a support player. Massive from Having a field Absolutely. day I, so I, I dare say, I, you know, I haven't got to, I haven't checked the records throughout, but I would dare say that this is his best performance in terms of frags for Na'Vi yeah. since he's been on the roster. Um, I'd, I'd be confident in saying that and there are plenty of rounds left to go there's a minimum of two rounds just left yet, idea, but there may the be even more this is play day six so far he has 32 kills before the start of this game so he could be on course to get half of his kills across all five of the first play days in one map quite easily quite easily he's going fantastically well at the minute he's secretly on the maverick on the maverick this time around see uh, just how he can put that explosive utility to use as well. A lot of frag grenades being brought along on the side of Na'Vi. Six in total, two for Doki secretly and saves. They're going to be out looking for kills and looking to clear castle barricades, I would imagine. They are attacking onto the top floor. I feel like Na'Vi really need that opening kill again. It did wonders for them last time, Des Doki finding that. 
It did here. I like the setup they've got, mind you. The castle and the laser gate stacked up together. We all know how much damage that can do to some teams who, I think especially in APAC North, aren't too confident in dealing with them on maps like Cafe. But here, at least, it is a different map, so hopefully a bit of a different outcome. That said, we did see on the attacking side that VP did struggle with getting rid of a couple of castle barricades that have been set up. And here, they've put an even harder challenge before Na'Vi. Grenades come singing in back on towards that shield, but eaten up by the ADS. Milan can just return back to his spot and not feel himself too pressured. Secretly, is out of frags. They've still got some on saves. Doki has still got one in back pocket as well. So they've got the tools. They just need to unsettle the man. Yep, they're going to have to use them. They need to make sure that they get that shield cleared out because it's quite clear at this point, especially with the utility in tow, that Milan intends to play his entire life here. He is going to stick hold of this for as long as possible. But entry kill, I said it could be important, and it goes the way of saves. He manages to find Rask and take the man down. He's been a little bit quiet since shifting onto the defence, and he was a real driving force of this Virtus Pro lineup. But right now, Milan is proving to be a massive sticking point for Na'Vi here. They just cannot move past the man who is hiding behind the shield. They need to get it cleared out. They need to find a way to get him moved. That should be the shield gone. That should be Milan now dipping away when this next challenge comes in if he doesn't manage to get himself a kill. Well, they're unable to pressure as much or as high here. He does have to step back ever so Still slightly. Still playing aggressive. He challenge the wall. Surely he doesn't swing onto the wall here as well. Nath was trying to get that one opened up. But as the spot they stand in, he knows that he really wants to press this one. If he can find a kill here, please tell me he gets seen. Please tell me someone's watching the angle, Na'Vi. Nate's going to be screaming at his team for that one. There is one still on square, but was not watching the right way. And the man in stock let him past his watch as well. C4 on side coming out, but Blur is smartly still outside the building. Secretly landing the trade a couple of seconds later. And now with the diffuser on side, they can start looking for a push in. But there's still so many members of VP hanging a little bit further back here, saying, please step in, please move forward so we can come let you, as you try and make your play. In comes the plank coming through though. Pasha, the one who's got to make some magic happen. Blur's been injured, taken out. In comes Pasha, beautiful shot coming out of saves. It's a one versus two with the diffuser down. Something tells me there will be no coming back here. WTG missing some crucial shots. The one's back outside the breach. One has spread all the wave down. Saves down to a slither of HP. With 35 seconds on the clock though, eh? something tells me this one should not be an easy win. Sees the man again, whiffs a couple of shots. Sees the head, still can't connect. Secretly lucky to be alive. Some might wager and he finds the closing kick. Yet again, secretly really ensuring Na'Vi get closer to the finish line. It's 5-4 and those words that we always say, Ace, coming onto our lips. Na'Vi there, just leaving my nerves in tatters at the end of that round, as They both seem to want to challenge the man, neither of them really in convincing cover. And you can see a timeline where WTG has the opportunity to find those shots and close out the round, but ultimately it is secretly once again. Des, he is doing is. everything for this team right now. He steps up, he gets the kill onto Milon, crucial. Goes and collects the diffuser, gets in and gets the plant down. I've got to give a nod to saves at that point, he gets an essential kill onto Pasha, who is coming to challenge that planter. Without that, it's almost certain that Secretly gets gunned down because the bookcase is a soft surface, bullets will rain through it. So it was essential that Saves finds the man from the breach, does exactly that. Na'Vi, since that tactical timeout, they've won both rounds, Des. They're fighting back. They could level things up now in round 10. It feels like they can, to be fair, with how the last three rounds have gone. Yeah, I mean, looking back at CC Lockers, it was... A bit of a scrappy one towards the very end of it, but the last two they've won, they won round six, three of the last four going the way of Na'Vi. And after that first half, we were doubtful that we'd see them get all the way towards the finish line, but you can feel it slowly starting to unroach forward. And you mentioned a man who's been pretty quiet in this half so far, Rask. Absolute monster playing on the Amaru, thriving in chaos, you might say, but so far in this half, unable to cause it. Absolutely. He's, you know, very much been sort of nullified almost and coming along on the vigil. We'll see how the pick plays out, but something I always comment about this operator is he doesn't contribute any utility or much utility to the team. This time he's brought along a bulletproof cam, so that'll be feeding some intel in at least. But what Vigil does is he forces the defenders to come and face check, to clear areas, to burn time, but he needs to find kills as well. Time and kills are his major contributions to a lineup. I don't think I saw Doki get the default cam then. Maybe I'm mental. But he was trying to nade uh, the alibi he was holding out around top of Banana. And I think as you saw, Karjeka just 
running away. He knew a nade was coming, and it is such a common play on this map. I mentioned that Shaiko does it, Doki does it. We saw it a little bit back in the first half, coming out of VP as well on the attacking side. So it's just the consciousness, I think, to say, right, okay, I'm holding an angle here. I know I'm getting naded soon. I've got no ADSs. Let's hightail it away and stay alive. Blur just trying to find the angle. Ooh, oh, absolutely. Fractions snake. of a millimetre. He gets away with that one. And Rask, as we've pointed out, he's struggling. Manages to find a kill onto saves. And that's exactly what the Vigil needs to do. Kajeka headshot onto Doki. And once again, things are going in the favour of Virtus Pro. But Nath, he manages to put the brakes on first for a second. One. Finding the trade. And that is going to be, as you say, his first kill of the game so far. Milon, he still has himself wedged inside a janitor. And he's made himself awfully difficult to move in this game so far now Rask just steps out has a little peek but dips back before secretly can find his shots for versus five. Na'Vi need this round to level things up. It's three to three. Nice and even inside a man count of the round. And one minute 15 left to go. Secretly gets found cheaply underneath there from WTG. Milan's but gone. always, always Na'Vi seem to have an answer at the minute. Yeah, I thought for a second Milan was going to hang out inside a janitor and cause a real uproar at the final stages of the round. But Blur does find him out. And that was the big one they were looking for. The two versus two with Rask somehow still alive this late into the round as well. Has got himself back on site ready for when this execute comes through so now it's going to come down to the more the minutia of an execute how well can either team set themselves up in this uh looking towards the execute rather than strictly going for kills here at least the bait coming in onto the lounge hatch to open it up and the nace just rotating himself all over to the other side of the map I mean, I look to push himself in through server instead. And this is the thing to remember, the vast majority of action that we have seen so far inside of this round has been on the top two floors, but it is, of course, a basement defence. Now, Nath, he's going to be able to put the exothermic on there, but a quick-thinking defender may be able to shoot that off through the soft wall. They're not in a position to do so, so the plant spot is open. Nath, no messing about, straight in. 16 seconds left to go. He's going to try and stick it, but decides better of it and just steps away out Whoa. of that toxic babe. Canister finds the kill onto WTG. Fast which could be crucial, Des, but here we go. Oh! Rask with an unbelievable 2K from on top of the decks. The smoke canister just blocking the line of sight for the attackers, and they couldn't make the challenge quick enough, and Rask, he manages to get that over the line in the 1v2. Beautiful, yeah, the, the patience as well. I mean, ultimately looking at it, he could have not got the kills there, and Na'Vi probably still would have lost with how things shaped up. One down by the smoke, and one man left to still go for the swing. Would would have been forced to go for the plan and then it would have been a freebie coming in for Rask anyway. But why not take a gift? Well, don't stare a gift horse in the mouth, as they say. A two couple of kills to close things out for himself and Virtus Pro move to match point. Can Na'Vi dig deep and find it to bring this back to six and six or do Virtus Pro take the lion's share and take all three points? The thing is, at this point in time, I really like how this match is positioned because... You know, does everybody really feel like Na'Vi just cannot possibly do this? Because I don't think that's the case. They've shown us over the last few rounds that they've got the capability to win them. They were in a 2v1 there. Realistically, they shouldn't be losing that. I mean, I'm not criticising, but you've got to question the positioning of the smoke. It just... It allows the angle Nath still onto down. the planter. Nath goes down because of the toxic babe canister. He doesn't have a choice but to stick the diffuser. And the, the line of sight is just completely blocked without knowing that Rask is playing in there on the desk and has that line of sight through to server. It's very difficult to judge that. It's def very difficult to say that that's a mistake. But Na'Vi will feel like they should have won that in a 2v1. And arguably probably should have. Yeah, it's... It was a tough yeah. one. It was a tough one. I mean, it wasn't one. as easy as, no, 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 of course as numbers not. suggest. But then you look at it and you stare at it and say, 5-5, five, five, oh, game on. Suddenly even Na'Vi could swing it back in and win it for all we knew. But so many games come down to those big, crucial rounds, and that was one of them that both teams will look back on and go, man, that could have gone differently very, very quickly. Pasha locking himself in here, scaffolding up with all three castle barricades being dedicated in towards these windows. And save's going to be stonewalled, blocked away from seeing what's going on inside of the lounge. We'll have to try and get himself a side angle, which you'll also discover is blocked out as well. Just see there, we've got the nested bulletproof cam. So you put the reinforcement on there. It's going to be cleared out by the nade, showing how possible oh, that is. That and then shot. saves. I tell you what, saves having a big round so far. Clears out an important bulletproof cam. Manages to find a beautiful headshot through onto Pasha. And that might just light a fire under this Navi side that they desperately need. We've got nades raining in. They've cleared Milan's shield a lot quicker this time, Des. Forced him into janitor. So that's going to allow a little bit of access to square. What I don't want to see this time is Milan being able to step out and challenge onto that hard breach planter because they cannot allow that to happen. 
Not here, but hey, we know what happened last time, right? With that push that came through, as you say, that was the one that really did the damage. It's so hopefully for the side of Na'Vi, they're a little more prepared this time. And I was going to say WTG, you know, there's a drone right there, but was worried about what was going on inside of stock. And fairly so, I believe it's Blur who's looking to challenge. But Rask, evening things back out into the four versus four. We're in that kind of mid-round lull where you're not going to see any big plays coming in. There's drone works going on, three of them from the side of Na'Vi, currently scurrying around the map, finding out where those next couple of members are before they decide what the next port of call is going to be. you still got Doki out inside a lobby entirely by himself, by the way. Everyone else looking to push him from this east side. Important challenge here WTG just looking to prevent the access into stock there and it also just keeps them in control of that janitor's corridor and continues to have that threat towards pushing into site now then damage taken by secretly there it's only going to be marginal and Rast does take a little bit as oh. well but WTG able to aggress into stock and find the kill onto Blur now leaves us four versus three minute left to go but Virtus Pro they're going to be feeling pretty comfortable inside of site here but they need to stop exposing themselves desk there's Rast just stepping a little bit too far forward there and taking a chunk of damage but Milan he manages to find secretly it's all falling apart as WTG finds the kill on to Doki the last man comes in and Rask takes him to task shuts him down shuts Na'Vi down and Virtus Pro they take a regulation win for three points and I tell you what those major spots the script just got ripped up and thrown out of the window and it's how we like it no one likes a scripted predictable outcome we like it when we've got six or seven teams all in contention. And I've got to give another massive shout out to WTG. He's sitting Love down it. there pretty sorry, rasking that round in particular.